Hello and welcome to Faith on Film, a program designed to keep you aware and informed on everything that's happening in the world of faith and family entertainment. I am so excited about today's show because, first of all, this is show number 100. Okay, I can't believe I reached 100, but I have. But the other thing that's making it so exciting is my guest today because my guest is not only my guest on my 100th show, but she was my guest on the first show, on number one. Nancy Elizabeth Stafford is an American actress, speaker, and author known for her roles on television. She came to prominence in the 1980s as Michelle Thomas, law partner on five seasons of Matlock. She later hosted a syndicated TV series called Main Floor, a show about fashion and beauty. And of course, she is my great friend. Nancy, how are you? <laughs> Oh, I, well, I'm better now that I'm with you. Hi, Isaac. I'm doing great. It's such a joy to be back with you a hundred episodes later. Gosh. Can you believe that? <laughs> I do believe wow. it. You do a great job. It's a great show. And I'm so proud of you. So, yeah, I believe it. And thank you for having me come back and oh, it, be your your hundredth guest. <laughs> it was a must. When I started thinking, man, I'm about to reach 100. Who am I going to have on there? And I thought, well, pfft. It's got to be Nancy. She was, and you know what? I was so grateful to you because when I announced that I was going to start doing this show, you called me <laughs> up and you said, I need to be your first guest. And uh, I was just blown away, you know. Uh, what, what, a, what a way to start this show, right? Well, talk about inviting myself, but I was so <laughs> proud of you and I was, oh, I was so honored to be your first and, guest. And I was grateful to you. But you just said that it was a great show. And I've, I've got to tell you, I'm not sure I agree with you because I was so I was so green. I mean, I had never done this before. I, you know, I've been a director for years and years and years, and I've actually directed some shows with you. But as the person interviewing, I had never done this before. And I got to tell you, I, first of all, I was very nervous. Uh, second of all, I really didn't know what I was doing. And I, I want to show a real quick clip right now <laughs> so that you can understand what I'm saying. All right. Now you you did mention that uh, you're also an author, or I mentioned it on your on your uh, intro here. Uh, you've got some books. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. I I remember natural, I remember yes. I remember when I said it, and after the show was over, I went down to my wife and I said, "Hans, I don't know what I just did, but I said, Nancy, <laughs> I understand you're an author. You got books." <laughs> I will never forget that, and I actually <laughs> mention it from time to time when I'm when I'm doing the show. So it was, oh, uh, it was kind of fun. But you know what? I don't know how much better I've gotten, but I am I have been enjoying it, and I'm so grateful to God that He has allowed for this show to not just be what I thought it was going to be, which was a YouTube show, uh, but He's mm -hmm. actually made it to where the show is seen on over 19 different platforms now, from <sighs> actual television networks to independent local stations to streaming platforms. Wow. All over the world it's amazing you're everywhere <laughs> he... and I think it's really important and it's for such a time as this Isaac um, God has not only just gifted you with the ability to host this show and your background but with all your relationships these are probably mostly your friends that you're calling in that you have built relationship with over the years so you are yeah. a trusted friend yeah. but also it's you're doing such a service to your audience by introducing them to faith-based and family-based con based content, as well as the people behind the scenes who make it happen, which is always sort of fun for audiences. So you're doing a great service. Thank you. And that was what was the motivation for me for doing this, uh, was that I just felt like, you know, a lot of the... Uh, I don't want to say lesser known, but, in, you know, the, the not not celebrity types like you that probably will not get invited to some of the big networks to be on, uh, you know, on, on their show to promote their next biggest studio film or something. But there's a lot of them that just are producing these great films and documentaries yeah. and all kinds of great, and they'll never get that exposure. So I thought, you know what, that's what I want to do is I want to make sure that they get that exposure so people know who they are. That's great. And they can support their projects. So how else would That's, many, many people know about a project to even find it online or yeah. decide to, to rent it or stream it? So yeah, you know, and that's, it's, you're doing great. That's why I think that God has just taken this show and exploded it to, mm -hmm. to the degree that he has is because that's how these people will, will hear about, you know, these folks making these great, uh, great fa faith and family uh, content, entertainment. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm ready for the next 100. 
Yes. So how long did it take you to do 100 shows? Uh, well, I started... Yeah, it was a couple of years because I remember I started, the first show went out uh, on April 1st, two years ago. So this past yeah. April was two. So it's it's a little, it's two and a half years, I guess. So you started pre, slightly pre-COVID. Yes. Well, yeah, I guess pre-COVID. And then... Um, Correct. Yeah. So, okay, now I'm going to switch over, interview. I'm going to interview oh, you. Oh, go ahead, yes. So how has, <laughs> how has it or has it changed your show? Uh, has COVID changed your show as far as accessibility um, to your guests or some of the stories or well, has there been a change? Actually, the interesting thing is that I started to do these kinds of what are now, I guess, considered COVID shows, <laughs> you know, where, where your, <laughs> yeah. your guests are, are also like on their iPads or iPhones or whatever. Uh, I started to do that before it was popular. And I remember thinking, uh, that's, you know, it's, it's not a great big show. It's just me on a, one camera and my guest, you know, somewhere uh, on, on their iPads. Uh, and then suddenly COVID hits and all of a sudden everybody's doing that type of show. So you I didn't miss a beat. <laughs> I yeah. didn't miss a beat. I started before they all did. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? I think COVID has changed a lot of things in the industry, our industry. And I don't think there's any going back. I think this kind of format is here to stay. And the beauty of it is that you get to interview anybody anywhere and um, you don't have to fly them in. You don't have to put them up. Exactly. It's changed everything. It changed, yeah. certainly has even changed the way films are cast and um, filmmaking yeah. is done. It's it's a new world. It is. And, uh, you know, I think people actually are enjoying seeing, you know, the folks that I interview in their in i was gonna say it in their habitat <laughs> see how bad i am see how bad i am like at this <laughs> in, in their in their <laughs> own home like Here i'm a, I'm a... The monkey cage. You're the oh i'm gonna have <laughs> to save that one for primates. well i'm gonna have to show that one in the in the 200th episode look what i said <laughs> i called your place a habitat <laughs> no, in my natural habitat but you know, I think people people enjoy seeing you all, you know, in your homes. I did an interview with somebody in their car. They were literally in their car when I did the interview <laughs> in, in a parking lot. So that was kind of that was kind of cool. I don't know. Um, I'll tell you what, though. Let's take a little break, and then when we come back, let's find out what you have been up to for the past two years. I'm sure there's a lot that you've been doing. <laughs> all right, folks. Yeah, we'll be back. Hang on one sec. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh. Oh, I'm. Oh, were we? St <laughs> yes. You expected hey, me to have a response. This, and yeah, I didn't. Just, yeah, yeah. You know, just something like, uh, oh yeah, sure, I've done a lot. I've got books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I talked about it. Oh no, you talked about it. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, yes. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll just be back. All right, folks, don't go away. We're going to be right back with more <laughs> of Nancy Stafford in her habitat. Ever wanted to binge watch family friendly TV without all of the commercials? Well, as a mother of two young children, it's vital that I have a platform I can trust. And 24 Flicks is where I find incredible movies, shows, comedy for me, and for my children as well. And for only $3.99 a month, it's a no brainer for us. You can join other moms like me by going to 24flicks.com and get your seven day free trial. Got a postcard from the grandkids. They went to the ark. Yeah, what does it say? Well, Annie says they had a blast and that it's really, really big. 
Everything looks big to a six-year-old. Well, Hudson says it's even bigger than the castle. It can't be that big. Can it? Go ahead. Think bigger. Welcome back to Faith on Film. We are here today in our 100th show with my favorite guest of all. I probably shouldn't say that because then my other guests are going to say, what? I thought I was it. Nancy Stafford. <laughs> <laughs> so, wait, yes. wait. I've, I've uh, watched many of your shows. You say that on every episode. I, I know. Well, everybody's my favorite on that day. I know. <laughs> I know. So, well, Nancy, I understand you are now a director. You got films? <laughs> <laughs> I got films. I got a film to start. <laughs> I Tell am, us all about I it. Have, I have just actually directed my very first feature film. Oh, that is I co-directed with a very, very talented young woman who is a graduate of Asbury University and then went on to get her uh, master's at FSU Film School. It was a project in collaboration with Asbury University's Film School, which is a really fine institution. And they culminate their semester every year with a film project. And they started with, you know, a little music video and then they did a half hour sitcom and then they did a one hour TV pilot, which they invited me to be a cast member of several years ago. Mm -hmm. And then last project they did was a full feature film. And they asked if I would come and co-direct with their recent grad. And mm -hmm. we were, we shot for 17 days. It was months and months and months of pre prep. And um, it was the most thrilling, exciting adventure. And I'm so proud of these students. Um, what they do, as with many, especially Christian college film departments, they, they populate their keys, which are for your audience sake, it would be like uh, producers, or audio music composition, maybe the director of photography with faculty. And then everyone else who is all the crew members are students. So it becomes a very immersive wow. environment where they're being mentored by all of us that are there. So it's more than just shooting a film. Right. You're actually also instructing. And it turned out great. I'm so proud that we've got distribution by uh, Bridgestone Media. And um, the film is called Damaged Goods. Oh. And you'll hopefully very soon be able to see it on a mm -hmm. streaming platform. It's, I will tell you, the subject matter is very tough. It's okay. a very, very, very difficult subject matter. Um, it's poignant. It's real. It's relevant to today's audiences. And, but it's a really important story that needs to be told. It's, um, can I briefly just tell the setup of the story just so your audience Oh, yeah. Knows? No, absolutely. Yes. Our 20-something protagonist um, is a mess. Her life is a wreck. Hmm. She grew up after her mother died when she was just a little girl from the time she was about eight until she ran away at age 17. She was serially sexually abused by her alcoholic father until she ran away. But her life now is a wreck. She, she can't keep a job. She drinks too much. She can't keep a boyfriend. She's truly damaged goods, the name of the film. And her father, estranged father, comes back into her life, and now she's faced with the ultimate decision. Do I do what is right, or do I use this opportunity to exact my revenge? And so the real the, the themes behind it are really what is, how does a person lead their life? And also, can someone move from the pain of their past to find wholeness? And healing and um, it's it's beautifully done it's powerful there just so your audience knows there is no foul language there are mm -hmm. no um, no scenes on camera at all that are at all offensive um, but it's really a very powerful powerful story and it's again just relevant it's it tackles an issue that is unfortunately far too prevalent today the only Christian character we have she she doesn't believe in God. She's been, as you might imagine, very, um, mm -hmm. she, she, where was God when I needed you? She says, actually, wow. but the Christian character we have is a hospital chaplain 
who herself has to come face to face with, wait a minute, how do I deal now with someone who is very different than I normally approach someone? She doesn't like God. She doesn't believe in him. And she's been called out by this young woman for, you know, spouting out spiritual platitudes. So she herself, the hospital chaplain, has to kind of make her own character arc and crisis of faith to discover how can I really uh, show Jesus to someone who is very far away from him? How can I now begin to listen and not just speak before I understand their heart. So it's a it's a powerful film. It doesn't come all tied up with a bow at the end. We don't see her come to Jesus on screen, but she um, she really she takes first yes. steps. And what I love is that it's an opportunity for us to see a film with someone who is taking beginnings of hope and healing and restoration. And by the end, she does that in a really ultimately very redemptive way i'm really proud of the movie that's great now i know you said it's done by you know students uh but i've seen i've seen one of the movies that uh you know previous movie that you were part of uh that they did and i'll tell you it was yeah Yeah. it was a great movie it was very very well done you you, this one is even even better and we've we've been we're accepted into about eight or ten film festivals nationwide we've already won we got best feature film number one feature film at the knoxville film festival and we're waiting to find out if there are more so um you'll be very astonished this is not a student film that's fantastic uh well we've got about a minute left you have anything else that you want to let us know that you're a part of that we can look for yeah i i actually shot two films during covid as an actor (laughs) the first one is called uh the mulligan which is really exciting um pat boone stars in that it's a a d- delightful film rick eldridge produced and michael seibel is directing that'll be coming out sometime soon and also i did a f- wonderful film called paul's promise that ryan o'quinn stars in and also produced and that one is a powerful powerful story set in the 1960s south mm-hmm. deep south civil rights era and it's about a racist alcoholic atheist firefighter who has a radical encounter with god and starts the first integrated church in the south it's based on a true story nice and um called paul's promise i'm proud of both of those movies all right well so if people want to follow you what's the best way to keep up with what you're doing my website which you always graciously put right down here so it's (laughs) nancystafford.com fantastic Fantastic. Well, uh, thank you so and much. And on social media, Facebook, Facebook. Uh, Find me on uh, Facebook. Of course, yeah. Uh, Facebook. <laughs> Although apparently Facebook is for us older folks now because they got all this new stuff like TikTok or something. I don't know. I know. I, Facebook. And even Facebook, Instagram. Me. I mean, like Instagram, just Instagram. Yeah. Facebook is great. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nancy, thank you so much for joining me again on, on this special show, show number 100. I'm just so Aww. amazed still. And uh, I, I, I don't think I want to wait till show 200 to have you back. Maybe we'll do a halfway, okay. maybe show 150 or something. All right? Good. That sounds great. Well, happy 100th. Thank, thank I'm you. I'm so proud of you. Thanks for having me. Thank you, folks. Don't go away because when we come back, we're going to have another update from Holly McClure. of Americans want more family-friendly content. 80%. So what's the solution? 24 Flicks On Demand. That's right. 24 Flicks provides unlimited, safe, family-friendly content without profanity, nudity, sexual content, and substance abuse. You can enjoy movies, TV series, comedy, sports, and so much more. Simply go to 24flicks.com. 24 Flicks, it's your home for unlimited, family-friendly, on-demand videos. Dad, this is a lot of work. It, it might take us the entire weekend. You think this is rough? Try building one of the most massive wooden ships in history without modern tools. Go ahead, think bigger. YBL is an experience 
like none other. Whether you are thinking about a call into leadership and ministry or something else. I would do it again in a heartbeat. I learned a lot about having self-confidence in myself as a leader. Even though we're teenagers, we still have the power and the capacity to change the world. God can do amazing things in a very short amount of time. The material that we studied, the activities that we did, really helped us to see that. Going to YBL and hearing from professors that are my future professors and professors now, coming to Asbury is really like a continuation of what Youth Become Leaders was. It was really important having a group of people my age who wanted to do what I wanted to do. We kind of end up as a family, which is the best thing I think about YBL. Welcome back to Faith on Films, Holly on Hollywood segment with Holly McClure. Holly, how are you doing? Hey, Isaac, I'm doing great. Good to join you today. Yeah, listen, I'm literally recuperating from COVID, so you notice I sound a little funny, but that's okay because I'm going to let you talk. <laughs> that's okay. I don't think you sound funny. I think it sounds good. <laughs> and I, boy, believe me, as one who's recouped from that myself, my heart goes out to <laughs> you because it just takes a while to get back into the, you know, I know. The physical but this good. is this is show number one hundred, so it's a very special show Yay! today. <laughs> and we had Nancy, our dear yes, friend, our, I know. our mutual friend Nancy Stafford. Yeah, I love that woman. Years ago, we, um, Nancy and um, Karen Cavell and a couple of other of us we were talking about doing a cruise where we were all in the industry talking about Hollywood, and we thought we'll do the blonde cruise, the blonde bombshell cruise, where all of us will go on, and it, it was fun. I've known Nancy for years; she's a sweetheart. And also, I'm sure you discussed that she's in the movie First Lady. And, you know, that was, uh, did you guys talk about that film, First Lady? Uh, we did. We did, yes. You know, um, I love it because she was with Corbin Burnson in that, and I've mm -hmm. interviewed him as well. And, of course, you know, years ago, L.A. Law, he was like the hunk that was in L.A. Law. And uh, people like that movie. So I would mm -hmm. suggest that for people who have just seen your show and heard about Nancy – to go ahead and look up some of these shows on Netflix and on Amazon yeah. or rent them because First Lady is a good one. It um, yes. involves politics and the royal charm. She's going to run for president. And then she meets the king and kind of changes her mind. That's a good one for the family and adults too. you like that. But also Christmas is coming up. Okay, so Nancy did, uh, she's probably done a few more, but I know recently she's done really good Christmas movies and, and entertaining for, and with a good message and good story. One's called uh -huh. Christmas for a Dollar during the right. Depression era. Right. Now, I had to kind of smile because, not that it's funny, but... Uh, during the depression, um, the, it's a family that's that doesn't have presents. There's the money is hard; they can't buy anything. So the dad brings home mm -hmm. one dollar, and the children split it all up amongst themselves to see what they could buy and what they could get. And I'm thinking, okay, well, with today's economy and what people are going through, and now yep. they're saying we need to have a Christmas. This is probably a pretty good film to watch <laughs> with a great that's message: true. Christmas for a dollar. I think that's a good story for kids yep. to see, and it's how the family discovers, of course, the meaning of joy and love. Right. And miracles and what Christmas is all about. So that's probably a really good mm -hmm. one. Also, Christmas Oranges, an orphan who teaches the meaning of love and the meaning of Christmas. It's based on the holiday classic tale, which is based on a book called Christmas right. Oranges. And then Christmas with a capital C. And I was going to say, that's also a very uh, important one right now because it has to do basically with canceling Christmas as we know it, if you will, this whole cancel an attorney culture. Returns, an attorney returns to Alaska mm -hmm. and quickly rocks the boat by setting an injunction against the nativity yep. display <laughs> and attacking tradition in Christmas. Yep. And you're right. <laughs> this is another one that's a modern day, you know, overcoming. Uh -huh. I think it, it was probably like before God's Not Dead. It was probably the God's probably. Not Dead except Christmas yeah. stories, you know, type of thing. But that's also a good one. And I think that's worth So there's three different films, um, Christmas for a Dollar, Christmas Oranges, and Christmas with a capital C, that your view, you know, viewers can um, take a look right. right at and maybe see before Thanksgiving. And then also yeah. Farmer and the Bell, Saving Santa Land. Yes. That, was that was your movie, right? I mean, that your I, producer on. I had some, I had a little bit to do with it, yes. That's coming out. And Jen Godson just said, put out a thing on Facebook and said, Excellent. hey, it'll be in a few theaters and look us up because we like they like to get screenings if they can. Oh. And then, of course, you can view it. So uh, The Farmer and the Bell, Saving Santa Land, for those of you who want another Christmas favorite. I can't believe that we're already getting so close to Christmas. 
I can't uh, either. <laughs> believable. Well, listen, folks, if you want to write uh, Holly McClure, all you got to do is write us here at faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. That's faithonfilmtv at gmail.com, and I will make sure and she gets your emails. Holly, thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks, Isaac, so much. Enjoyed it. Don't go away, folks. We got more as we wrap up this show. Love the classic movies? Well, 24 Flicks has you covered. You can watch some of your favorite movies and TV shows you've known and loved. Watch anytime and anywhere and as many times as you want. Simply go to 24flicks.com and start watching now. 24 Flicks is your home for unlimited, family-friendly, on-demand videos. Meet Will. Will wants to make a movie based in Bible times. No, maybe a Western. Well, maybe an apocalyptic movie. A biblical era apocalyptic Western? That would be so original. But Will needs some sweet sets to bring it to life, and Will is 25,352 miles away from any of those sweet, sweet sets. Or so he thinks. Fortunately for Will, there is a solution. Introducing Capernaum Studios, your ticket to realistic locations and everything else you need to bring your period accurate story to life. Book a tour today, like Will, who is, um, yet to leave. They say it's really big. What's really big? Those aren't silly. Oh, I know. It's bigger than the size of our house. It's a little bigger than that. Like the size of two houses. No two houses in a spaceship. I bet it's even bigger than the castle. Don't be ridiculous. That's impossible. shows. I'm telling you, I'm so grateful that God has uh, just allowed me to reach this milestone of 100 shows. I want to encourage you that if you've not seen all 100 shows, that you go to my YouTube channel, Faith on Film TV, uh, and you can watch all kinds of wonderful shows there. There's a lot of people there that I think you will enjoy hearing from. People that have dedicated their lives to creating content that's good for your soul. Uh, and especially check out show number one with Nancy Stafford. Um, so just go to youtube.com and look for Faith on Film TV. That's Faith on Film TV. And I want to remind you that uh, if you want to write us, uh, write Holly some comments, perhaps, uh, perhaps some suggestions on maybe some movies that uh, you would like for her to review, just write us at faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. That's faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. Well, we've reached the end of a milestone, 100 shows. Tune in next week as I start show number 101. Hope to see you next week. Take care. Take care.